Way too many to choose from. Which one should I use? Wow, look at the glare on these babies. Which one should I use? Oh my goodness. Hi, I'm JU and you're watching JU Nation Fishing. This is the third part of a six part series that deals with confessions of an addicted coconut fisherman. I'm recently a newbie in coconut fishing. In this part, I'll be talking with you about flashers. Do you need them? Let's find out. The very first coconut salmon I caught was in Lake Berryessa. I was fishing with Fat Dog. We were running two rods without flashers and two rods with flashers. But we were targeting landlocked salmon. It turns out that the rod with no flashers ended up landing my personal best, biggest coconut salmon ever, which is uh, 18 inch plus coconut salmon. It was so big I thought it was a, a landlocked salmon. Since then, I've caught only coconut salmon with lures running behind a tornado flashers. Now, if you're like me and you go visit a local shop and look at the coconut salmon section, there are so many different types of dodgers and flashers. How do you know which one to buy? How do you know which one to use? Now, there are local shops here that carries really fancy, beautiful looking flashers. I'm gonna name a few of them. Well, number one, of course, is Chaya Lures. They have some beautiful ones that I see Warren Ferrickson use all the time. They have those online. Now, local here, locally here in Folsom, we have Chain J Tackles, run by Jessica and Johnny. Their shop carry a whole bunch of flashers. And lastly, I use Tornado Flashers. Why? Because Mr. DK, the owner and CEO of Tornado Flashers, was the first one that sent me all these beautiful flashers. I'm a fisherman. I'm going to use them. So in this episode, I'm going to show you what worked and some of the one that he gave me recently that I haven't used yet. And I'm going to show you once again how to make your own flashers. The first four sling blades that I received from Tornado Flashers, I ran them behind my Coke Stinger and some of my experimental coconut lures that I made up myself. And they have landed a lot of coconut salmon for me in a few trips. Here's one of them. It's a green five and a half inch, they call it sling blade. And note the configuration. In the end it has this, top has this. Okay, I'll show you later on, the new configuration is much better. Anyhow, so this, this goes to your main line. And this bottom here, you would put your lures running behind it. So here's my Coke Stinger, one of them, one version of my Coke Stinger. And I just connect it right to the end of this flasher like this. And, and that's pretty much it. And I've caught a lot of coconut salmon already with this model. But as I share with you, now they're available at tornadoflashes.com. You can go get the blade and the stinger from Mr. Dave Kostinen. The other three tornado flasher that I've used also work really well. One is the silver one, front and back. Another one is a pink one with a bone in the middle. Back. And lastly, here's a gold one. Copper in the back, 
cup in the front once again. So I've caught a lot of coconut salmon so far. So recently, DK sent me three more blades and the accompanying coconut lures. I'll be trying that out. First off is this cool blade here and the accompanying coke stinger. Do you use coke stinger family? Available on his website. What I like about this design is now he's got the snap swivel on top. Unlike the old model where it only had this on top. See the difference between the two? See, I love this snap swivel versus this little round ring. Old version, new version. Another one that I received from DK is this pattern. It's an orange looking one and it comes with this new big, bigger piece than the Coke Stinger. It's kind of big. He sent me another one in this thing, this blade and this version, a smaller one. Put the two together so you can see here. So the fun part about coconut fishing is you just match the blade with the lures that you're running. I don't really know if colors matter or not. I've been very blessed. All the ones that's been given to me have been smacking the coconut salmon. So I'm still challenged by not catching enough coconut salmon. I'm not really certain because they all work really well for me right now. And now I also have another Tornado Flasher 360. It's beautiful looking one was given to me and I'm gonna try it out. I'm gonna try it out. I think it's 11 inches long. I'm gonna go ahead and put a lure behind this and try it out. That's why I'm addicted to so much fun. Now you ask, you might be asking me, what happened if you don't have a flasher? When I went to the local shop to visit the coconut salmon, I realized there were some smaller dodgers and smaller flashers. So now I'm gonna show you how to make one of them out of your own toolbox, hopefully if you have what I have. Now I'm going to show you how to make your own flashers. I was given these big wobbling spoon from Chai Lure, Mr. Mark Upshore. Man, this baby is about three and a half inch. These are very colorful and this one is three inch. What you need for this project is a split ring pliers. See, you have to remove the hook first. from these wobbling spoons here. There you go. Remove the hook. Just carefully remove the hook using this split ring plier. I choose this three spoon because I love the way they look, they're the color. Got a beautiful color on them. And these are big spoon for big fish. Since I'm not gonna be using them for a while, remove the hook and turn them into flashers. Next up is, I have these beautiful snap swivel from Salmon Fishing. I'm gonna put two on each of the end here. There you go, one. Two. Guess what? Now if I got myself a small flasher and just do the same thing with the other two so here you go 
I made myself three smaller versions of the Tornado Flasher. I can't wait to try them out. Four inches, three inches versus five and a half inches. Well, there you have it, family. Would a smaller version of homemade flasher work? Will the 360 work? I don't know, but that's the fun part about fishing for coconut salmon. I'm going to be trying out in the future, and I'll let you know how it goes. So once again, family, there are always good fishing videos out there. Thank you so much for hanging with me in the third episode. Come back for the next episode. I'll be talking about rods and reel. Until the next time, peace out, family. Woo! Bam!